tonight. Our special coverage as an economic boycott against supporters of Israel's war gains traction. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. Today is the 65th day since Israel started indiscriminately bombing Palestine. Israel is carrying out non-stop air raids in central and northern Gaza. There is severe ground fighting in the southern part of the Strip. The Director of Communications at the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees says Gaza's humanitarian crisis has now escalated into a humanitarian catastrophe. She says the agency is currently accommodating nine times the number of people originally planned. She says there are 1.3 million Palestinians in overcrowded and unprotected shelters. Disease and hunger are spreading within these facilities. She says there have been break-ins at the agency's warehouses. Aid trucks have been halted in the streets by hungry Palestinians. She is calling for an urgent ceasefire. The health ministry in Gaza reports over 50,000 injuries in the northern strip. Reuters footage reveals smoke bombs thrown in Jabalia refugee camp, causing panic among residents. Jabalia camp is a frequent target of Israeli air raids. The residents of the camp are witnessing widespread home destruction and a high number of casualties. There are calls for an investigation about a viral video showing an Israeli soldier vandalizing a Palestinian-owned shop in Gaza. An Al Jazeera journalist, Anas al-Sharif, has lost his father to an Israeli airstrike on their family home in northern Gaza. The toll of the conflict is alarming. At the time of writing, over 18,200 Palestinians have lost their lives. On the other hand, Israel's revised death toll stands at 1,147. In a social media post, an Israeli official has addressed the U.S. Secretary of State, citing concerns about aggression from Iranian-backed Hezbollah militant group. The Israeli official then acknowledges the U.S.'s support at the U.N. Security Council. He appreciates the recent U.S. veto preventing a resolution backing a ceasefire. Israel has also issued threats of expanding attacks on Lebanon, potentially targeting Beirut. Meanwhile, protests by Palestinian rights advocates in Washington, D.C. continue, urging U.S. lawmakers and the White House to intervene in ending the war. The U.S. Senate is currently working on passing a $14 billion aid package to Israel. The new package will supplement the annual $3.8 billion in U.S. assistance. Egypt and Mauritania have invoked Resolution 377. The resolution is referred to as Uniting for Peace. Uniting for Peace resolution specifies the General Assembly shall act if the Security Council fails its primary responsibility for maintaining international peace because of lack of unanimity of the permanent members. As the conflict persists, casualties are rising on both sides of the border. In Lebanon, an Israeli bombardment has killed an 80-year-old Lebanese official in the village of Theba during cross-border fighting with Hezbollah. The toll in Lebanon is now over 120. Israel reports losses of six soldiers. Demonstrators supporting Palestinian cause took to the streets Sunday in Toronto, Canada. A large crowd gathered outside the U.S. consulate demanding a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Due to a large turnout, the intersection of Young and Dundas streets was closed. Toronto police say they have arrested one person for assaulting a police officer during the demonstration. Disturbing video footage captured by witnesses shows police officers restraining an individual on the ground. Some officers can be seen using their knees, with at least one officer repeatedly punching the person. A group representing influential Canadian Muslim donors has withdrawn its support from the Liberal Party of Canada. The decision comes as a response to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's reluctance to call for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict. The group known as the Network 100 GTA had earlier conveyed its concerns in a letter to the party president on November 27th. In the letter, the group expressed its disappointment in Trudeau's handling of the situation. The letter says that Trudeau seems uninterested in listening to their calls for a ceasefire and respecting international law. It also raises concerns about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. 
The group has been a substantial financial contributor to the Liberal Party since its formation in 2014. It played a significant role in Justin Trudeau's first election victory the following year, in 2015. The network consists of approximately 400 members. The members are mainly Canadian Muslim professionals, including lawyers and doctors. Experts say the potential impact of this withdrawal will be significant. The group has hinted at possible further actions if their concerns are not addressed by January. These include supporting the New Democratic Party or Green Party candidates in certain ridings. Activists rolled over joined the call for global strike for Palestine today. Rights advocates blocked the entrance of the New York Times headquarters in the United States, waving Palestinian flags. In Montreal, Canada, protesters took part in the global strike for Gaza in front of an Israeli company. In the Palestinian authorities, demonstrators called for a ceasefire and in Lebanon, all public offices and schools remain closed. The strike has been advocated by Palestinian media personalities Wizard Bissan and Motaz Azeza. Both Gen Z Palestinians have become renowned for the coverage of Gaza's conditions following Israel's war. The duo urged their followers over the weekend to join the economic boycott. They have urged participants to refrain from spending money as a means of sending a shock through the global economic system. Calls on social media also suggest abstaining from using social media accounts. The strike is not explicitly linked to the broader boycott, divest and sanction campaign, which encourages consumers to stop buying Israeli products and those from companies accused of supporting Israel's war. However, this latest initiative reflects the growing influence of the boycott movement. Organizers of the boycott, divest and sanction movement have recently advocated for a permanent ceasefire, sanctions against Israel and international criminal court arrest warrants for Israeli leaders. According to a United Nations report, over 85% of Gaza's population has been displaced in the past two months, with one million of them being children. And in related news, Starbucks Corporation is grappling with a huge economic loss. The corporation has seen a $10.98 billion drop in its market value in recent weeks. The coffee chain, which has been supporting Israel, has been facing several challenges, including a global boycott campaign. The boycotts began after Starbucks Workers United, the union representing many baristas, expressed solidarity with Palestinians. Their support for Palestinian cause stirred an uproar on social media. The unionized workers initiated strikes, demanding improved working conditions and contract negotiations. Industry analysts attribute these challenges to a combination of societal issues and global tensions impacting Starbucks' stock market performance. Spanish fashion giant Zara is under fire for its latest advertising campaign titled The Jacket from the Atelier series. Critics say the campaign photo bears disturbing similarities to the destruction in Gaza. The photo features model Kristen McMenny among mannequins amidst rubble. Some even claim that a piece of plasterboard in the background resembles the map of Palestine. The campaign went viral over the weekend, prompting widespread calls for a Zara boycott on social platforms. While Zara has since removed the controversial images, the company has not issued an official statement. Palestinian artist Hazem Harb has expressed outrage over the campaign. He says using death and destruction as a backdrop for fashion is beyond sinister. Prominent figures, including Mona Katan of Huda Beauty, have condemned the campaign. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now, so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.